we and by we i mean me and my love bug hi love bug i'm gonna tell everybody hi and say hey i got a sexy haircut and show everybody hi I want to tell everybody hi, my little bug. But you never want to be on camera. You don't want to talk about girl stuff like makeup. Because you're a big man, huh? I love, I love you too. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get you a treat. Okay. Hey guys, it's me, Marnie, and welcome to this week's edition of First Impression Friday. So this week I have um, a uh, interesting first impression because I am reviewing the first ever, the OG Lorac Pro Palette. So... I do have a couple of Lorac Pro palettes. I have two and three, which I have right here. I have right here. If you guys didn't look at the diamond list, this one is my favorite palette, eyeshadow palette of all time, which I don't throw around lightly. I don't think I've ever said that again for another palette. Uh, the Sweet Peach palette and Too Faced was my favorite until I got this one. This one is amazing. I love this palette. So I have this one. I have the Lorac Pro palette too. And now I have... The Lorac Pro Palette 1. So this eyeshadow palette retails for $32? $39, I think. Yeah, $39. I got this one at Macy's. And Macy's is always running sales, including flash sales. Um, and they're always giving away Macy's money. So you can definitely save money on it if you just keep an eye out for it. And it's not just this palette that it comes with. In each box, you also receive a Lorac um, behind the scenes eyeshadow primer which i love so these are 16 pan pads pads palettes if you want to see what i think about this palette you can just keep on watching thanks okay people so i have a headache and this light is right in my face but so my brows are finished i have my eyelid primed and um uh, set and everything i did use and i want to show you all this because i did use the lorac um behind the scenes primer because this is an every lorac pro palette so i did want to um make sure that i did use their palette but it is in here again i just don't want to use it again you can look at my lorac pro palette two and three reviews to see this in action it's awesome it made the diamond list this year because it's just it's such a good primer and i hit my stuff again this is the Lorac, the original Pro Palette. So this is the box itself. Again, I, this is my third one, so I kind of know how, I know the ins and outs of how it works. So this is it. It's beautiful. This one is really pretty because it's just a really simple black and white. And y'all know how I love that because like this entire room is black and white. You can see the black wall right there. So my shirt is even mostly black and white today. Uh, so on the back, of course, it's got your... The actual example of what the palette looks like on the inside. So opening it up, it I, I really like the way the Lorac boxes are. But here's the thing with that. The Lorac boxes are constructed really, really well. So you open it at the bottom instead of like the side, which I hate opening on the side because it just, it doesn't look good after you open it once. So you open these from the bottom and they're all like that. There's just um, ingredient information. So this is the palette itself. This is my first time seeing it. So this is the palette itself. Okay, so it's pretty and black. But see, this is the reason that I don't keep the boxes for Lorac because the palette itself is so skinny and beautiful. And I just really, I love the way theirs looks. Because I always find their palettes look professional. As I mentioned earlier, here is the behind the scenes primers in there as well. Each one of them comes with one. So I have like six of these now. So I'm going to put this back in here. Actually, I'm not going to put it back in here. I'm going to put it in the reuse box or I'll give it away. I don't know. We'll see. So here is the... The back of the, I want to show you the back of the palette really quickly. I mean, the back of the box because, you know, packaging. They have on here, not only that, but they also have the, uh, my nails are not done. So, um, they have pro techniques, every, um, everyday matte eyeshadow, blah, blah, blah. Palette contains eight shimmer and eight matte eyeshadow shades, many behind the scenes primer for stay true colors at last. I will say that primer is probably my favorite one right now but they're always doing like macy's money days and if you get the app there's always macy's monies there there's always flash sales recently there was a shoe flash sale and i cannot wait to get my sneakers in but they do makeup flash sales as well they do everything so it's just this is the palette itself which i kind of did already cheat and look at a little while ago here it is it is beautiful it looks literally just like the one the two and the three like but this was the original this is the og so i'm not surprised this is the rock cover which goes on i am so excited to try this palette because the Lorac pro palette three now brace yourself because i don't throw this around lightly even though my mother says i do she's like every palette is your favorite palette the Lorac pro palette three is my favorite palette of all time i mean just everyday use just grab and go that one is insane it is beautiful it's picked 
this is not about three this is about one so i'm looking at the colors i'm trying to decide on a look to do i'm gonna actually hold it open so you guys can see too against my purse wall hey purse wall girl um that's my handbag wall it's just got the black the whites and the clears and the red so black white and red is the theme for the so i'm looking at this i'm thinking of doing a regular not regular but what i usually do is my looks I'm all, but like i'm going to an event or whatever um if i had not already set my eyes with the cream with the cream with the uh bella pierre loose setting powder i would set it with the cream but i don't like to use eyeshadow for that i have that powder that i never use so that's what i use it for there you are girl so we're going to do mauve as our transition color right here there's not a lot of kick up in this at all like anastasia beverly hills has the worst kick up ever la rock i have to say does not really have that problem Ooh. I have company here. Don't laugh. That's not funny. I so anyway, I'm just doing my uh laughing because I'm always singing about makeup. Like I don't just do this here at the store, looking at stuff online. Ooh, I love this tutorial. That's how I am all all day long. So and I'm doing what I do every single time I use a transition color. I'm just taking it from corner of my lid. Not corner of my lid, sorry, corner of my lashes to corner of my brow okay y'all so next i'm gonna go in with this lovely nyx crease brush and i'm going to dip into i okay before this came in i looked at this shade and i really liked it i'm gonna go in with sable right here which is one shade that literally i know it's gonna sound crazy because i have so many palettes as y'all well know but i don't remember having a color like sable so i'm gonna go with sable in the crease and i've been doing this new method with my crease where i put the color in the middle and then blend it out instead of going like all over so I'm gonna, yeah, like I put the most at the top. I like Sable, but it's darker than I was expecting it to be. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love Lorac. Lorac, so just using it now, one, it's more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be already, which is crazy because I said that about all of them, and yet I have used them all. And two, their blendability, I don't know if that's a word, but I'm gonna make it up anyway. The fact that their products blend so well all of the palettes including this one that i own from them the eyeshadows blend i have a little bit of a splotch here i'm about to fix that but um a, a splotch that's a scientific word they just blend so beautifully every time and that's the thing that makes my pro palette three that's what makes it my favorite palette it was the first Lorac pro palette i actually owned was the three and I just, I, I was like shocked by how easy it is to blend everything together. Speaking of which, so I'm going to go in with this Shani eyeshadow buffer brush. And I want to put something as a highlight, which is good because that's my first foray into the uh, shimmer shades. I want to go with this beautiful shade called Nude, which is right here. Also, let me say, I'm going to try to start doing this because I've been watching, I watch YouTube like all the time. Um, I mostly stream upstairs. I see a lot of people hold their palettes like this. It makes me nervous because I always feel like I'm going to break the, the little flat part. But at the same time, it's easier to show you guys. And I don't use them enough to flip them back and forth. I have so many palettes again. I do reach for the Lorox more than the rest of them. But there's no, I usually like a white shimmer for this. But the closest I have is the nude, which almost like, and that's something else I like about Lorox. They put their colors like almost where they coincide like you could use this nude and match it with this gold but sometimes like this one doesn't do that these don't do that it's almost like the shimmer version of the cream so i'm gonna use nude as my uh brow highlight which usually i would use cream i don't know I, i'm today i'm gonna use nude but cream is definitely an option for that and i'm just gonna put that <sighs> I love that. That is beautiful. Like, that's prettier than some of my highlighters that are marketed as highlighters. Lorac. Lorac, baby. Anybody else watching the new season of RuPaul's Drag Race? Lorac, you're a winner, baby. And I do a lot with highlight. I do a lot with highlight. I have been told too much. Like, I've been told multiple times, you need to take some of that off because we're just going to the store. That's just... <laughs> but that's just me. I just like... I love a bright, blinding highlight. Like, I don't know why that's a problem. We need more light in the world, y'all. Not... So I'm ready to do lid work, so I'm gonna go off camera and apply milk like I always do. Also, she just noticed that Laura got me too hype and I forgot to blend out what I already did. So I'm gonna do that really quickly before I blend milk in, in case I gotta add more milk because I forgot to do that. So people ask me too while I'm doing this because I'm looking at how beautiful this one is. People often ask me what the pr purpose is in transition shades because you are somebody who doesn't do a lot of makeup and you do watch YouTube for like a tutorial. Like if you're getting ready to go somewhere and you're like, I wanna look 
extra cute today, so I'm gonna do a YouTube tutorial and watch it. And my family, I better watch mine. But anyway, um, I'm not gonna focus too much on milk. I'm just gonna do it while I'm talking to y'all. But, um, so they're always like, what is the purpose of a transition shade? Why is there a transition shade? Why do I need one? And here's the reason, in my opinion, here's why I use one. I can't speak to what the actual definition and the true reason is behind it, but the reason I always use a transition shade, and I don't just use one there. I use one on my lid sometimes. I'll use one wherever I'm doing a bunch of different shades of a palette. It's to lay down something that's going to make all of your colors flow together. So for example, I use, and I probably need to save this for a tutorial Tuesday, but since Lorac makes such beautiful transition colors, I'm going to explain it to y'all. So for example, today I used already Sable and Mauve and Nude. I used Sable and Nude. Sable was my crease color and Nude was my highlight, right? So I laid Mauve underneath it so that Sable had something in the middle of sable and nude to make it blend now Lorac, honestly Lorac is such a good company and they make such beautiful eyeshadows that you may not actually even need a transition but i'm just so used to doing it that i just do it this slate is beautiful i think i'm going to use that today in some kind of way i don't know why my eyes keep going to it while i'm talking so as i was saying um distracting myself there that's the point of a transition shade so between the sable and the nude so it's not like oh here's brown oh here's pink you put mauve that's the reason that it's usually a mauve or a taupe because these colors are usually really in the middle so if i go with espresso or black or like i said i'm planning today maybe to fix plus my brush and use sable as my contour color it just makes all of those colors go it, it makes them blend better is the is the tea about that little lesson for you because i know sometimes people like those big uh i hate when people do like when they're doing tutorials and they're just like flying off the handle with like and this transition and this contour and this blah 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 and it's like like those big old tees i'm gonna talk while i'm working but like those big old triangle con concealers highlighting contour you don't really need that like that's a lot like i did that for years so i'm not i'm certainly not knocking it but it's just not really in my humblest of opinions it's not really necessary so i am considering for my eye for the lid part going with slate on the outside and going into no let's go wild y'all we're gonna do slate we'll do slate as like an all over lit color which is yeah, so just saying that uh just know that like when they're giving you all of these thousands of things to do you don't have to you don't have to do all that in your regular life you really don't it's not that serious so going in with slate which to me is just i mean my eye keeps being drawn to it with a thick with a pack a packed shader brush See how that looks. I got. Uh, I'm gonna do a halo eye. I'm gonna do that on the outside and the inside. Huh. I was not expecting it to be this dark. Look at that. Beautiful. But I was not expecting it to be that dark. So inside, still beautiful. I just want to show y'all how pigmented this is. This is literally what I took. Like I literally tapped that brush in there. And this is what I got. I think that because I did the milk under it as a base, we should be all right without doing a transition color. I don't even need this brush, so I didn't actually use anything much. So I'm gonna go with this Assam's Glam Precise Blending Brush. That was an Ipsy find, just so y'all know. And I'm just going to blend the middle. Yeah, just like that. I'm gonna turn it just to make sure, but I'm gonna flip that same Bogache shader brush that I love, another Ipsy find. I'm gonna go with Champagne, which is this really pretty. Oof. Look at that. Such a pretty pink color. I want to pop that right in the center. Yeah, like I said, I didn't really need to worry about it. Not showing up because of the slate bold. We are talking Lorac. I figured that was going to work. I did do two layers. I went back and did another pass with that just to get it to show up a little more. Now, I will say for champagne, and it's probably just because I'm dipping in it so much. For champagne, it is giving me a little more kick up than slate did. So just so y'all can see, there's a little bit more kick up. Not crazy, obviously, but... There's that back with SLMS Glam Precise Blending Brush. And I'm just going to shave a Santi brush, girl. So I'm going to go back and slate a little bit because I just would like to cover. Yeah, just like that. So instead of using a contour, what I'm going to do is take slate and kind of finesse my crease a little bit. This is where we are so far with the upper lid look. I am going to come back after I'm finished with my foundation. I am going to do my under eye now that I have my foundation done. I'm going to go back and highlight and conceal and all, highlight and contour and all that junk and bake after this. But I really wanted to get that done first. I like to do my under eye and then clean it up with 
um, my cream highlights. So my brush cups, I have two of them because I have so many eyeshadow brushes. Of course, I'm just going to use this crown one instead of the one I was looking for. And that's something I have to mention about Lorac palettes, actually. That is one thing that Anastasia has on everybody. Every Anastasia Beverly Hills palette does come with a brush. Smashbox does too. So I just wish Lorac, because Lorac has a pretty high price point at 40 bucks, not have a brush. So I'm going to take this palette and I'm going to go in with, I think I'm going to go, I traditionally go with whatever the transition color is I use. But since I want to test this palette out, I'm going to go with taupe instead. And I'm going to use that to line under my eye. Just to give a little bit of definition. Oh, this thing is like a pencil brush. This might have been better for a... Uh... I have foundation on the inner rim of my eye. How hard was I foundationing today? And just lining that under my lash line. And what I normally do, but I really like the size of this pencil. So I don't think I'm going to under eye liner line. I want a good amount of smoke now that I'm uh, messing with this palette. I want that smoke. So I'm going to. Um, and then I'm going to go in with. I'm going to go ahead and try black. Which is of course. Surprise. It's a black. It's a matte black shade. But since my shirt is black. I have so much black trim on this. Taking back Sunday shirt. Um, oh. Look how pigmented this is. So this is like a pencil brush that I got again from. Where else? Uh, Ipsy. I'm just using this Vasanti blush to blend it out. I actually want a little more definition. Is take my handy dandy contour brush. And I like black, which I use to line under my eyes. So I'm going to put just a teeny tiny dot. And it's pigmented, so I'm going to have to be careful with that. But just a little teeny tiny dot in the corner, in the corner. Because I love this halo eye, but as I'm working it, I feel like it's starting to... I feel like it's starting to... um you know, fade just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to go back in with this S.O. Miss, Miss Glam angled eye brush, which sucks because it's so clean. I'm going to dirty it by dragging that into the... And before I am completely gone to finish the rest of my look, I'm going to take this Vasanti brush that I keep using repetitively. And I'm going to go back into Champagne, which is that beautiful color I used earlier for the middle of my um, halo eye. And I'm going to take a little bit on the pointed part and I just want to tear duck it. Because y'all know, tear ducking it is like everything to me. Yes, there we go. Yes, that's what I wanted. And again, Lorac is, their glitter pigment is just so beautiful. Like, I always, like, that's one place that I never have to go back and add a blinding highlight. Because they literally come with blinding highlights. Like, this bottom row, like, probably champagne, nude, and maybe even light bronze and pewter. I would, in a pinch, like, on, me and my sister are actually speaking actually as i'm shooting this we were talking about a girl's trip and like for that kind of thing just traveling i would definitely um just peg this and use that as a highlight i wouldn't do it often because the pans are so small but i would do it because it's so look at that look at that crap beautiful okay so i'm gonna go do some more work on the rest of my look and i'll be back with y'all at the end i'd mess it up close close so i'll be right back <laughs> this thing right here is the bane of my existence so what you do with this they have the hole in here you put the he's coming over here to get his ball he's like what are you doing so you put the treats in the ball i mostly put his food in there because he makes me fill this thing like eight times a day you fill this up are you fussing at mama for having a treat ball okay i'm coming i just want to explain i just want to explain really so you put the treats in here and then they gotta roll it around to get it out well, my child has figured out. Come here, stop fussing. So I'm gonna go fill it right now before we swatch this freaking little rock palette. Okay. Oh girl, but these fur babies in America today are so spoiled, my god. So anyway, okay. The Laroc Pro palette. Again, I want to remind y'all, this is the OG, the original palette. So I did this look today, tonight. <sighs> I love it. It came, we just came back from dinner actually. I did use the, again, I want to show y'all. So it stayed, looks beautiful. I love it. I'm going to do the mattes and then the shimmers. I just always do it that way. I don't know why. We got white. Okay. We got cream. Cream is, I'm not judging cream like that because it's like my skin color. My wrist is cream. Where's this next one? Taupe. Taupe should be a little bit... Oh, I don't want to get on my shirt. Taupe should be a little bit more darker. Yeah, taupe. We got... What is this? Light pink. 
and mauve. These swatches are really, really light, especially, especially for Lorac because my other Lorac palettes are like crazy pigmented. So let me wipe off my fingertips with this. Then we got Sable Espresso. Oh, I can show y'all now. Espresso Black. Um, Nude, which now we're drifting into the shimmers. Champagne. The shimmers have a little more kick up, just for the record. Not that it's a bad thing, it just is a thing. So again, we're going in with Sable right here. Sable. Okay. Mm, okay. This is Espresso. Espresso. Oh, Espresso's showing up. Okay, Espresso. Thank you, Espresso. Espresso's like, girl, go sit down. Black. Nice black. Nude. Nude. Oh, the shimmers. Again, did not did I not say shimmers always come through. So that's new. This is champagne. Champagne kind of, if you guys can see, the shimmers are a little bit chalky. Like I'm having some stuff falling off my fingers with that. Which I'm not mad at. It it happens. I mean, I'm not mad at it. Like I get I get really annoyed when people are reviewing eyeshadow palettes and they're like, oh, this one, look at that chalkiness. If it's something like if we talk in Anastasia subculture, that's one thing. But if eyeshadow was gonna stay on your hand like that, it's probably gonna spread on your eyes. So I'm not, I'm like, like, like that upset when that stuff happens. Now, if it's an uncontrollable amount, then yeah, we're gonna have an issue. I'm gonna zoom y'all in because I'm hoping that's why the swatches look so weak. But I mean, it's looking weak on my arm as well. Now, there is a little bit of fallout, if you can see from Champagne where I swatched it. There is a little bit on the case, but that's, I don't really understand the choice of going with a black case either for that reason so anyway now we got gold i think these swatches are about to start yeah okay so gold oh did i cover one? Oh, i think i did i think i went straight over champagne which is a really really bad sign because that means it was not pigmented enough to show up so i'll put champagne on the other side since i apparently just went straight clean over it light bronze next to gold Let's go with Pewter, which is a color I'm very interested in trying in my next look. And then we got Garnet. Which for me, Garnet is more red. That's really orange to me. But, you know, why do my swatches always lean? Why? So then we have Deep Purple. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Deep purple is gorgeous. I like deep purple. So that's deep purple. So slate, which is the main color I use on my eye today, which I love. So this is slate. Yeah, that is what I like to call a swatch. And the champagne, the remix. So the way I do my swatches is different than a lot of videos because of the fact that I hate when people like do over and over again to build a swatch. I think that kind of defeats the purpose. Like, if I take the entire pan out and put it on my arm, then it's going to look like the pan. These are all of the swatches for the Lorac Pro Palette. Now, again, this is the original Pro Palette. But for me, it's actually my third Lorac Pro Palette. So I have, and I have them here. I have the Lorac Pro Palette 2 right here. And my favorite palette of all time, the Lorac Pro Palette 3. So, you know, it can kind of let you know how I feel about them. I'm going to show them all to you. These are all three of them. I actually have the one upside down, but I can't really flip it right now. Oh, I hit my lip. That's fine. She better stay on. That's some Kylie Cosmetics. She better stay on. Okay, so these are the three palettes. So this is the one, the one I did today. This is the Lorac Pro Palette 2, which I will put a card for up at the top somewhere. This is the Lorac Pro Palette 2, which I also did a review on. I did a full review on this one. And this, oh, is the love of my life. This is the Lorac Pro Palette 3, which is my favorite one, and it is just amazingly beautiful. So for this palette, I want to talk about the packaging first, and then I'm going to kind of compare it to the other two. So this palette is the OG that started it all. I love the look of these. I've always said I love the look of these. They look so professional. When you lay them all out on the table, like they just look amazing, especially if you stack them on each other. Like a lot of times when I'm getting ready, well, honestly, a lot of times when I'm getting ready, I just use one. But if for whatever reason I have to use a couple, what I do is this. I'll put one like this. 
I put the other one on it like that, like this. Like I'll lay them out like that. I'll put like one on the mirror and one on the mirror and one on the mirror so I can lay them all out on my counter while I'm working. When you see these as compared to like Too Faced, Tarte, really any other brand I can personally think of, Lorac definitely by far looks like the most professional. Like when I'm working, I do feel like a makeup artist, like I have it in my kit with me like that's how i feel when i lay these all out now let me be clear i'm not a makeup artist but i like the slender nature of these they're great to travel with the way they stack up on one another is i just love it i love the layout of the palettes all of them but specifically this one um i love the way they're laid out where they have these little squares and i love that they have um the mats on top and the shimmers on the bottom i keep these i hate to get my mirror dirty it drives me crazy so that's why I have this plastic on top of it. I also love that the name is on the bottom of each one of them. Makes it so much easier if you're shooting a tutorial or like a first impression or just walking somebody through it. Like because I have this YouTube channel and this blog and I've always been into makeup. My family will come to me all the time and say, hey, show me how to use this. How do I use that? I saw you use this. I want to try it. How do I use it? It's so much easier to talk them through when you can see it on the... Th I have a lot that they have the pants on the front and the palette and the colors on the back or they have they have the pans and then they have the names but it's on the plastic that you pull off to use what's the point solar rock i thank you for this these palettes retail for 39 dollars a piece which is expensive it is pricey but i will tell you i truly believe if you need to get one palette get a Lorac pro palette i wouldn't suggest you get this one if you need one that you're going to use every day I would suggest three because that's the reason I love it. I love it because of the fact that the colors can be used every single day. They're super neutral. They're beautiful. It does have that black, which is similar to this one. Like you see, it has black in the OG and it has jet black in the... Oh, oh. so you have... um <laughs> You have very similar colors in both of these, you know. You don't have to have all of them. If I would tell you to get one so far without using the Lorac Pro Palette 4 yet, I would definitely tell you to get this one. But if you have this one, it is not a bad palette. I don't find it as pigmented. Like, it did not swatch as well as the other two. That is a YouTuber sin to say, I know we're supposed to just love pigment, pigment, pigment. But sometimes I don't really need that. Like, this look here is cute to go out with to me. I'm okay with this. So I love it as far as the majority of eyeshadow palettes go. I don't, it's not my favorite Lorac palette. It is actually out of the three I've tried. It is my least favorite, but it's a good palette. So if I had to give this one a grade, I mean a grade. If I had to decide on a rating for this, I would give it three out of five stars, which sounds harsh, but I just don't like it as much as the other two. It did not live up to the other two of them, but it's a good palette. I'm not getting rid of it. I'm certainly not giving it away. So like mom, I know you're watching. Please do not ask me for it because I'm not giving it away. This palette is staying with me, but I just don't like it as much as the other two. But also in the $39 price range, you do also get this Lorac Behind the Scenes Pro Primer, which if you look, and I did not set this up for today, every single Lorac Pro palette comes with these. So this is literally my favorite eye primer I currently have. I do have a little station right here. Usually if I'm just grabbing one, it's this. It's the Lorac Pro Primer. And because I have three, I have um, three of these little ones because each primer, each palette came with one. And um, I do use them all the time. Like they are so, so, so good. But that being said, I haven't run out of this little tiny one that came with the palette. So and same thing with the eyeshadow. I know $39 is expensive for a palette. It's not Anastasia coming in at freaking 52, but it is still a little pricey and i think even though the pans are little you will not need to use that much of them like you literally like my swatches are just back and forth and these are kind of weak but for the most part on the eye like you can see in the test out how much pigment each one of them does pack so you're not gonna run out of that square trust me i haven't hit pan on the Lorac pro palette 3 and i use it all the time so i am going to list that palette with the links below i'll also go ahead and include the other two palettes just in case you want to try them out yourself um i hope you guys enjoy this video three out of five stars for the Lorac pro palette it sounds low but it's just because it has such a high bar compared to the other two so thank you so much for watching this week's edition of first impression fridays i hope you guys um uh, enjoyed it right i will see y'all next time here same glam time same glam channel right here on diamonds and denim First impression Fridays. Thanks. Bye.